This happened last summer and is probably the weirdest, scariest thing that has happened to me. It was a warm New England summer night, and my friend who I'll call Chris was sleeping over my house. Chris and I have always been night owls, so whenever we sleep over each other's houses we usually stay up pretty late. We were up at around two in the morning, bored out of our minds trying to think of stuff to do. We are both into the outdoors, so I came up with the idea to go on a short night hike near my house. We brought some firecrackers to light off and some music. Looking back, it was a dumb idea, but whatever. I live on a rural dirt road surrounded by woods, so there's a decent amount of trails near me. We got there, and unexpectedly it was very muddy, and I had dropped my flashlight, which broke it. We were considering turning around, but we ended up just using our phone flashlights. I have been to this place before, and I knew of a pond with a dock that was on the trail that we could go to. The hike to the dock only took about twenty men. When we got there, we were greeted by hundreds of frogs croaking constantly, which made us a little on edge, but we stayed. We lit off some of those little red firecrackers that make a loud noise but no fire. We started to play some music on our speaker, and we're starting to have a good time when Chris tells me to turn the music down, because he thought he heard something. I turned it down and there was the sound of an engine in the not-so-far distance. It sounded like an ATV, or another type of small vehicle. Now these trails are known to have ATVs, side-by-sides, jeeps, etc. to ride on them, so it's not out of the ordinary to hear those type of noises out there, but all I could think was... Who the hell would be out riding at this time of night? It was probably around 2.30 in the morning when we heard this noise. Me and Chris looked at each other with confused looks. The sound was coming closer, and we decided to quickly pack up our stuff. Whatever vehicle it was, was coming to our location, and we didn't know what else to do, so we hid in the nearby bushes ditch. The vehicle had reached us and had stopped just before the opening to the dock and was just idling for a solid five men there. This is the weird part. Whoever it was had their headlights turned off and most likely used a small flashlight to navigate so we could not see their location. They were purposely trying not to be seen. Why would anyone with good intentions want us to not see them? Our hearts were pounding and at this point we were genuinely scared. After five men... The vehicle left the opening and headed off in another direction. Once we thought it was far enough away, we booked it back to the car, just using my phone screen light to see. On the way back, we saw fresh exhaust smoke lingering in tire tracks on the trail, which means they saw our car at the trail head and knew we were there. Thankfully, we made it back to the car, and while we were driving home, Chris said, that felt like pure survival which I thought was a great way of describing the whole situation. Now I've came up with one theory to what was going on that night. Maybe someone was late night cruising on the main road with their ATV and saw our car, and thought we were lost and tired helping us. But that didn't explain why they were hiding their location. Besides the whole no headlights thing, I also thought it was weird that someone would be out there at the hour on their off-road vehicle. I, at 17F, was out doing some shopping after school, so it was dark by the time I decided to stop by one of my favorite sushi places, which is near a grocery store and other shops, all close to my home. The sushi place is right next to a boba shop, and I peek in to try to see if a friend of mine was working so I could say hi. But I didn't see them, so I turn around and I see this guy standing there trying to get my attention. Miss, excuse me? I just stare at him for a second, unsure if I should really be talking to this stranger, before he asks if I have any spare cash for him to buy a drink. I tell him, I don't have cash on me, sorry, and he says it's okay, and I walk into the sushi place. While I wait for my food, I wonder if I should have just offered to buy him a drink, because I'm the type of person who loves to help people, and I just feel bad ignoring those in need. I get my food and I'm literally about to exit the store. When the guy from earlier walks in, he stops by the door, asking the cashier if he knows how he could get help because he thinks his car got stolen and that he was from, insert name, of neighboring city. 
I pause, cause again I felt bad for not helping him earlier and I was curious. I buy him a drink this time, even offered to buy food. I showed him the menu and he glanced at it then asked for fried rice, which wasn't on the menu but I was like okay and just bought him the drink. He tells me thanks and asks if I know anything about his car, then randomly asks me if I know where a cold stone is. At this point I'm thinking, if I were either homeless or my car got stolen, cold stone is the last place I'd want to be. But I explain to him that it's not within walking distance. He's like, oh, and asks me if I would be able to show him the way and maybe give him a ride there. He pulls out cash from his hoodie pocket saying, I could pay you back $10 for the ride and the drink. Now I'm thinking, you had money and let me buy you a drink. And why the hell would I give you a ride? I need to leave. So I say, no, ha ha. The drink was my treat. Hope you get your situation figured out. I leave the sushi place. He exits too and starts walking behind beside me. I get scared and decide not to walk back to my car. Instead, I speed walk into a right aid. I turn into an aisle and see that he's still following me. Miss? Lady, excuse me. I finally turn around and ask if he needs anything else. You were going to give me a ride? No, I can't. Oh, okay, sorry. He walks away. I pace around the back corner of the store for a while, terrified if he's still in the store or waiting for me outside. B.W. My phone had died, so I left it in my car. In the store, I see a dad with his daughter, looked like a middle schooler, and I go up to them, finally start crying, and say there was a man talking to me, and if they could please walk with me back to my car. The dad asks where I parked, agrees, and a few minutes later we leave Rite Aid. I'm still in tears, poorly explaining the situation. I point out my car as we approach. The dad says, Okay, we'll wait here until you leave. Make sure to check your back seat. I do, and I even check my trunk because I'm so paranoid. I thank them over and over before driving off, and I just sob the whole way home because I don't know what exactly was going on with that man or why he wanted to go to my car. I get more scared thinking of the fact that I'm a 510 girl who probably couldn't defend herself well if it came down to it. Maybe it was a misunderstanding? But what business did a grown man have asking a teenage girl for a ride? I was genuinely terrified. Yes, I shouldn't have been out so late. I should have had my phone on me. I should have ignored that guy. Sorry for being a girl who just wanted sushi at night and to help someone who looked like they needed it. It's hard to trust people, clearly. Happy to be safe at home now, although I will definitely feel uncomfortable shopping there or eating sushi again. Which is unfortunate because I frequently do both. I-31F was living in a larger city up until a couple months ago with my ex, 30 or 31 m We weren't doing well in so many ways, and I'd recently gotten a job at a liquor store. We had a lot of regular customers, who I knew to a pretty high degree by sight, name, after only about two weeks. There was this one man, about my height, maybe late 40s, early 50s, that came in and kind of seemed like he was trying to flirt with me. But given at the moment I'm on the chubby side and don't find myself particularly attractive, I wrote it off. This one day, I'm going on my lunch, and on my way to my car when he pops out of nowhere in the parking lot. He tells me he's noticed me for a while. I'm so beautiful and kind and he really wants to take me out to dinner. I tell him sorry, but I'm in a relationship. He says that's fine just as friends because he really wants to know me. He hands me his card, which is just his name, number, and email, and I leave, thinking that's the end of it. Cue two weeks later. He shows up again, this time waiting for me to be in charge of his transaction, and he places another business card, same exact one on the counter, and insists I call him. Honestly, red flags were on fire at that point and I started having a large male co-worker walk me to my car. 
I saw this man several times after, lurking around the bushes by the parking lot, hanging around my car, etc. I ended up telling my boss and the owners about him too. I quit not too long after different reasons, broke up with my BF and moved back to my hometown. Honestly though, this guy trying so hard to get me alone made me so scared. I already carried pepper spray but also started carrying a knife again and practicing opening it and getting in position. Still have this man's card photographed in my cell data and told several friends as he really creeped me out and definitely didn't understand social cues at all, like the most obvious one of no. Almost everyone has a first memory. Mine was the time that I was almost kidnapped in plain sight from a grocery store around age four. For background, I am an only child who was raised by two working parents. Occasionally, a stay-at-home mom down the street would take care of me when I didn't have preschool. Her oldest daughter was my friend and about the same age as me. Her youngest daughter was two years younger than us. We will call the mom Linda and her daughters Eva, four, and Carla, two, all fake names. This story takes place around 1999, 2000 in North Carolina. One day, while I was under Linda's care, we all loaded up in their van to take Eva to dance class. After walking into the dance studio and getting her checked in, Linda told Carla and I that we would be going to the grocery store. The grocery store was in the same shopping center as the dance studio, literally two doors down. Linda put Carla in the child's seat in the shopping cart while I climbed into the part that normally holds your groceries. Upon entering the grocery store, we were stopped by an elderly couple, one male and one female, that kept saying how cute Carla and I were. At first, Linda just nodded and agreed and began to make friendly conversation. She told them that Carla was her daughter, and I was just a friend. After this, things became much more sinister. The old lady suddenly started to try and pull me out of the cart, telling Linda that she already had enough children and they wanted a child so badly. Thankfully, I was big for a four-year-old and squirmed around in the cart until she let go of my shirt. Linda was stunned and just tried to pull the cart away from them, I just remember Linda rushing away into the grocery store as the old lady kept shouting, Please, we just want a child. I don't entirely remember what the older man was doing during this interaction, but I remember him being there. I also don't remember Linda ever telling grocery store staff about what happened. I am sure she was shocked. I mentioned this incident to my mom within the last few years. She was never told by Linda that anything happened. Anyways... There is a small chance that I completely misremembered this event. I am not naive to the plasticity of human memory. However, the overwhelming emotion associated with this event is fear. Also, no one in my family even knew that this happened. Thanks for watching the video till the end, guys. Have a nice day.